Hey guys, I'm Brian Latimer. I want to introduce to you a new worm that I worked on with Z-Man Fishing this year. It's called the SMH Worms. I also designed a specific jig head around this whole project called the SMH. Now, when it comes to fishing tackle, you know, there's a lot of different flashy baits, a lot of things out there. But what I noticed in my experience, especially in tournament fishing, is that the simple baits, the simple techniques, is what actually dominates the world of tournament fishing. So a really good jig head, a really good soft plastic worm is what catches most of my fish. So I designed the SMH worm, just a simple six and a half inch worm that you can rig a lot of different ways and a really, really good jig head. So I'm gonna teach you everything about this worm, everything about this jig head and why I designed it the way I did. Everything from the hook, to the keeper to even the head shape. The design of the head is designed specifically for this worm and specifically to catch you a fish in a lot of different situations. All right, so let's dig into what makes this jig head and this worm special. Starting with the jig head, I wanted a, a jig head design that didn't hang a lot. And one thing that I think is always overlooked is the shape of the jig head has a lot to do with your hookup ratio. When you got a jig head that has a really blunt face to it, it can be really hard to get a good hookup ratio, especially when you're using light line. So the head design is somewhat of an oval shape, but it's really slender. What that does is it makes sure that that jig head will pop through that fish's lip and ensure that you can get the hook point to his mouth. The line tie you can see is a vertical line tie that makes it really easy to use around grass and rock. And it's recessed a little bit to help protect your line. Coming down to the hook, probably the most important part of any jig head is always gonna be the hook. I wanted something big enough to where I could use 12, 14, maybe even 15 pound tests if I needed to, but if I'm using six or eight pound tests in an extreme finesse situation, I can still get good hookup ratio. So I went with the four out hook, but it has just big enough wire that if you guys want to throw it on a bait caster, I know a lot of people not really in the spinning tackle the way that I am. If you're spinning tackle illiterate, you can still use this jig head and get away with setting the hook with a you know, good bit of stank on the hook set. Moving on down to the business end, this is what makes the whole system what it is, right? The soft plastic. If you don't believe me, just start researching tournament results and you'll find that it's always simple baits that do the best in events. And I noticed even in my own tournaments that I used a six to six and a half inch worm a lot. I've used it for flipping, I've used it for drop shotting, I put it on jig heads, I put it on shaky heads, I've used it for Nico style fishing. There's just so many different ways to fish a six to six and a half inch worm. Starting at the very top of it, the worm pairs up with the jig head perfect. That's important because the amount of plastic on your jig head affects the fall rate. And just how the bait looks in and of itself and how many fish you can catch on each bait. With it being the last take, you already know, right? You're gonna be able to catch a lot of fish on it. The shape of the worm gives the bait a lot of action. You can see it has a really neat taper. As you get towards the tail, it gets really skinny. What that does is give the bait a lot of lifelike action. That's the name of the game. No matter if I'm fishing this guy wacky style or Nico, if I'm putting it on a jig head or a drop shot, the fact that it has that taper on it is gonna give it a lot of action in the water and most importantly, lifelike action. Sometimes you don't want things that flap and move around a lot. It's the subtle lifelike movement in the water that helps you get the bite. I like to keep it super simple. Anything from shag colors to green pumpkins, that's what I use most of, and that's what you're gonna find in the SMH worm. Let's show you guys how to rig the bait. It's a pretty simple setup, but I wanna show you some of the things that make this guy work, especially good, great. Let's do that again. Let's make it less worser this time. <laughs> All right, let's show you guys how to work this bait. We're not gonna work it, we're gonna rig it. All right, let's put the plastic and the jig head together. This is the way that I like to rig it. I actually pretty much skin hook this guy. With it being elastic, you know, I don't have to worry about the plastic ripping or tearing just because I didn't use enough plastic when I'm threading it on the hook. I'm gonna use about, you know, about an eighth of an inch of plastic, poke it through, and I'm just gonna push it all the way up to the jig head. You see, I've got a metal keeper there to keep the bait there 
It's not gonna pull down on a hard cast or a fish pulls it down, none of that. What I like to do is when I go back to put my hook in the plastic, is that most of the time, I would say 90% of the time, I'm just gonna bury that hook right in the plastic. And that's the simplest way to use this, this guy. A lot of people are gonna ask, well, why didn't you design a screw lock jig head instead of the regular, just straight up jig head? I don't like screw lock jig heads. One reason that screw lock can sometimes prevent you from hooking up with the fish. The best hookup ratio that you're gonna get is with just a normal jig head here. The reason being, you see how much bite I have over the line tie? Here's my line tie. You can see I'm almost a quarter inch. My hook point is almost a quarter inch above the line tie. So I've got a lot of bite. Fish comes in to grab the bait, pretty sure I'm gonna hook him. If my worm was standing about a quarter inch off the jig head, that just basically shortens that gap between the line tie and the hook. Sometimes, especially when you're using light line on a long cast, it can prevent you from hooking up with the fish. This is the best way to do it. Put it in there, bury it in the plastic just like that. There's just something about a six inch worm that you can use in so many different situations that I wanted one specifically built for tournament fishing. So here it is.